Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. It's time for NASA and Boeing to face facts. Starliner is not a safe enough vehicle to risk two of our valuable astronauts on a re-entry attempt. Not with ongoing thruster problems that have not been rectified after two years of work to say nothing of other problems that have yet to rear their ugly heads. This ship is is not safe, and we need to find another way to get our astronauts home. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon and welcome to another Angry Bulletin. Um, Before I get to the topic at hand, I need to discuss a crisis that the channel is currently in as a result of things happening um, in my family life. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail as to what exactly is happening, and if you're not interested in any of this, just skip to here. So here's what's going on. I, as I have mentioned a number of times, had to come back home for an unexpected and serious family crisis. Uh, You've probably seen me in this room um, during my live stream, those of you who watched my most recent one. I'm currently um, staying at my ex-wife's home. I've been here for nearly a week and I would in no way impose on my ex-wife unless I was dealing with a very serious situation. And as a result of my supporters, I reached out to them, my Patreon folks, folks on Discord, etc. That's how I got here in the first place. Now, next week, I'm going to be able to go back. However, I'm going to need some help. And that's why I'm coming to the normal viewers, the regular viewers, as opposed to the usual suspects who always support me because I have asked for their support way too many times. The fact of the matter is, if only one-tenth of one percent of my subscribers were to contribute five dollars a piece, that would be enough to get me back to the UK. And I need to be back there by the 26th in order to get up to the Shetland Islands in time for everything that's happening happening with Rocket Factory Augsburg and the first ever commercial orbital mission, vertical mission that is, from Western Europe ever. I mean, this is a huge, huge event. I definitely want to go. The spaceport is expecting me. They're going to be putting me up. I mean, so many things that they're doing for me in order to provide you guys with some amazing content that nobody else is going to be able to provide, but I need to get there, and this is just what's necessary. If you're in a position to contribute $5, my PayPal's in the description. That's enough talk about that. Let's get on to the topic at hand. So as most of us know, the first ever crewed test flight of the Boeing Starliner spacecraft began auspiciously enough, and this was not much of a surprise to anyone because the Atlas V had performed so well on over a hundred missions prior to this, so nothing was going to go wrong with this part of the mission. It was during the docking that all the problems started to rear their ugly heads, as they did with the last docking attempt to years ago with this spacecraft. Only this time, there were more thruster issues that forced the first docking attempt to be called off completely. Five thrusters in all failed during the first docking attempt, and one of those thrusters has remained offline ever since. In a press conference, Boeing said that the thrusters were firing in rapid sequence during the docking attempt, and they may have overheated. That's what caused these thrusters to malfunction. However, they're not sure. They're still not sure. And at the same time, helium leaks keep rearing their ugly heads as well. Five so far, and who knows how many more helium leaks are going to crop up. Helium is necessary in order to push the propellant through the maneuvering thrusters on this spacecraft. And if there is any problem with that type of system, it could sabotage this vehicle's ability to maneuver precisely. And precise maneuvering is an absolute essential during the re-entry process. Now, so 
far, the problems have been restricted to the thrusters that are in the service module. The thrusters in the main spacecraft, and these are what are going to be primarily used during the re-entry attempt, they don't seem to have had any problems thus far. It seems to all be service module issues. However, problems with the service module could have very serious consequences during the re-entry as well. Keep in mind that during the first test flight of Starliner, the separation of the service module and the crew module did not go very well due to a timing issue. The two spacecraft almost collided, which of course would result in a loss of spacecraft and a loss of the crew. So the thrusters on the service module and everything else on that part of the spacecraft really have to be performing at peak condition in order to make sure that you have an ideal re-entry. If you have any sort of malfunction that causes an incorrect trajectory too steep, well, you're going to have a burn up because you're going to go down into the dense parts of the atmosphere too quickly while the velocity is too high, you're going to burn up. And if it's too shallow, you're going to skip off of the atmosphere tumble the spacecraft and probably hit the atmosphere on some other part of the spacecraft aside from the heat shield and that will also have the same results. It is for this reason that NASA and Boeing have been keeping Sunita and Butch up in orbit for this long. They are trying to figure out exactly what happened with the helium leaks and with the thruster malfunctions. It is absolutely vital to understand these problems so that they don't happen again, especially at a very inopportune time during re-entry. Yes, there's a lot of redundancy built into this spacecraft. There are 28 thrusters, even with five malfunctioning. That's not going to sabotage the spacecraft completely, but if this malfunction were to happen at an inopportune time, when the ship absolutely needs to be hitting the atmosphere at the right trajectory, well, that could cause some very serious consequences. Absolutely cataclysmic, really. Not only for the future of Boeing, not only for the future of NASA, but of course, for Sunita and Butch. So here's the bottom line as I see it, and frankly, I don't see why any reasonable person would look at this otherwise. If Boeing cannot determine specifically what caused these problems, both with the leaks and with the thruster malfunctions, then these two astronauts should not be going back to Earth in this death trap. It's an unwarranted gamble, and there are other alternatives available to both NASA and Boeing. They could send the Starliner back unmanned and test the thrusters, test everything else out about the spacecraft that could be done while the crew is on board, and have it re-enter. If the spacecraft performs perfectly, well, there isn't that much to worry about for a future crewed mission anyway. You really don't have to have the crew on board in order to put the Starliner through its necessary paces for the re-entry. Now, if Boeing went this route, there is a possibility that NASA might require yet another crewed test mission to make sure the entire process works perfectly from beginning to end, but I think that's going to be necessary anyway way unless Boeing can really tie down these problems. Starliner has had far too many issues with this mission already for NASA to consider risking full crews of astronauts, four astronauts or more at a time next year without getting these questions answered. So really, unless Boeing can figure all of this out and put in corrective fixes so that these problems don't reoccur in the future, I don't see how Starliner has a future anyway. The most important thing at this point is getting these two astronauts back home safely. That is far more important than the future of Starliner, than the future of Boeing, than the future of anything at this point. We absolutely need to get the people who have been willing to put their lives on the line for this rat trap and get them back home safely now that it's already flunked the test. 
And the solution is simple. Send up a crew dragon, SpaceX has plenty to spare on a rescue mission, and bring the astronauts home on that. Yes, I know that's going to be very disappointing for a lot of people, probably including Butch and Sunita. I think they want to see a successful test flight, but it still isn't worth risking their lives. Not with so many unknown factors right now. Send up a crew dragon, or perhaps a Soyuz if there's a problem with the SpaceX at the moment. I really don't see why there would be, but there are a number of ways to get these people down safely, and that should be the absolute priority at this point. But I'm pretty sure that neither Boeing nor NASA listens to me, so that being the case, it is very possible that they are going to attempt to re-entry on the 26th of this month. All we can say at that point then is pray for the astronaut's safety and hopefully everything goes well. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you Dustin Smith and Chris B, my latest Patreon supporters. Really appreciate your help. If you would also like to support this channel, all the details are in the description. Please like, please subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.